Short Scary Stories Practice by username Disappointment Number 11. I had taken up the violin once. However, the chaos of adulthood and the responsibilities meant I had to stop playing. When my daughter was five, I signed her up for violin lessons. I wanted her to experience the joy of music as I did, but I also harboured a desire for her to become a great musician, like the child prodigies I had seen. So I made her practice. I'd sit for her lessons, picking up on details the teacher had pointed out. Then I used my perfect pitch to correct her tuning, shifting her fingers if I had to. She hated me for that, but it was for the best. People called her skilled at such a young age, amazing. However, as she grew, her old violin became too small. I had to find another one. When I found the violin online, I couldn't believe my eyes. A full-size violin being sold for just $10? I knew about scams of course, but I couldn't pass up a deal like that, so I contacted the seller and brought the violin home. It was in wonderful condition. The wood and the strings showed no signs of age. As my daughter drew her bow across the strings, a sweet note rang through the room, far cleaner than the squeaks that had came from her old violin. She fell in love with it. That was the first time I didn't have to drag her out to practice. I was happy to hear Paganini and Shirahazad echoing from her room with a sound matching those from the maestros I had once adored. But every time she touched that violin, she was put in a trance. One she was so unwilling to be broken out of. She said that she wanted to become better, to practice more, to become worthy of playing it. After she locked herself in her room and practiced for a day straight, I removed the lock from her door. She responded by taking the violin and running away. She was missing for four days. Her dehydrated body was found in a soundproof room with the violin clutched in her thin fingers. I was devastated. My daughter was dead. I couldn't bear to glance at the violin case for a month after her death. However, the desire to hear that sweet sound again grew as I mourned. Sometimes I'd find myself about to open the clasps before reminding myself of her fate. One day, I finally opened it. How long has it been since then? 40 hours? It uh, doesn't matter to me, I hear that sweet, silvery sound again, and I feel the same joy I once felt playing. I understand her decision now. It doesn't matter that my stomach growls or my head feels weak. It is the weakness of the human body. One I must overcome to be worthy. The sound is beautiful, and I cannot stop. I must continue playing.